it was his 52nd life, he probably had more experience with understanding how those things would benefit him. Um, I do understand how giving up material possessions that are like, unnecessary or um, keeping yourself from things that you crave or you want or you desire um, can be good for you because it helps to build character and resolve and teaches you to be stronger against even yourself, which is sometimes the hardest thing to be strong with, is with your own character. That's, that's sometimes the most difficult things to overcome are the things that challenge our character. So teaching yourself to have that type of focus and to um, have a, a, a serious attempt at pursuing the faith is good for building the character. And so he, he went down that path to the point of being enlightened before he was able to see his child. So. The spirit talk, right? Even <clears throat> whenever we do things, we need to sacrifice for, for that goal, for example. Why are you here? You go to school, right? <coughs> to get a diploma, to get a degree. Mm, if um, you're so busy with uh, your entertainment, no way for you to focus on studying, right? So why are you here for four years, five years, eight years, so forth? That's the time you sacrifice for education the future of the career. So in, an, in doing any, anything, we need to sacrifice. No, not talking about if he sacrificed the life of the prince in the palace. And plus, many people wonder, why did he leave his uh, young um, wife and, and little child, right? Uh, so, even, even later on when he came back, when after he attended enlightenment and came back to teach them. So his <coughs> father made a request that please uh, don't, al don't allow anyone to become a Buddhist monks, nuns, or even novice without the parents' permission. So of course, this is this common sense. I mean, they agree that. With that. Uh, but he, before he left, he know, you know, his, his wife and child was secure, right? In, in the palace, they, you know, they are rich people, so, so they will not be uh, hungry uh, or starving. Uh, so anyway, so, well, of course, because of his, uh, uh, his wish um, to seek for the truth, for the reason why he, he had to set, set that kind of <coughs> But it's a spirit talk. Speed up uh, decision. Okay, um, uh, there's many many uh, legend uh, uh, involved with uh, this with this uh, road walk. The next one, cell modification. You have it. Mm -hmm. What is fine? Um, well, shortly after he decided to leave his wife and yes. his small child, um, he decided that he was going to basically deny himself the basic pleasures of living. So um, by doing that, he abstained from sleeping, from eating, um, from doing you know normal things that people would regard as you know ne obviously necessary to live. Um, and as a result of denying himself those um, pleasures, he actually became um, so small that he almost starved to death. And this was over the course of probably six to seven years. And um, there's actually a picture in our book. Um, that kind of depicts him and how you know small he was um, portrayed as in like sculptures. Um, he looked almost like a skeleton. Um, but after he almost reached the point of death, he decided to reject his current practices, um, and he followed the middle way path, um, which encouraged you know some type of modification, but um, didn't involve any type of self mortification. Have you seen this type of image? Okay, how about the next one? That was me, yes, and I can't put it any better than she did. Oh, really? Except okay. to say that self mortification is not um, uh, unique to Buddhism. Most religions do it around the world. Uh, so, has anyone of you been in India before? No? Okay. If, if you have a chance in the future to visit uh, India, you see there's many uh, 
different traditions, and one of the traditions is as mm, the one who give up the wealth and material lives um, <coughs> to go for the spiritual mm, inclinations. Somehow, they culture itself. And I, when I was in India, 1998 and 1999, I saw myself, I myself that, the, um, uh, that the, what you call the uh, uh, Jainism, uh, the uh, tradition that people don't wear any clothes. They walk on the street, normally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I saw it twice. <laughs> it, 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 New Delhi really? is the capital of India. Uh, it's just normal for them. And sometimes, sometimes they went. They, they sometimes they go to the forest, they go to the mountain to torture themselves. That's just because they say because of this body, uh, mm, it brings a lot of suffering. So that that reason why they torture this body. Yeah, and for the prince, of course, actually he he studied. He went to uh, study with two teachers, but he didn't satisfy with their teaching, so he went along with the tradition, Hindu tradition, that, is, um, that you need to torture your body, because of this body, it brings a lot of suffering. So that, that's why he stopped. Um, this was stopping, uh, and the, the image uh, depicted that. Yes? Um, there's an excellent documentary about the Buddha. I think yeah. it might simply be called the Buddha. I'll have to check it. I think it's called the Buddha. Yeah. What is it? It's called the Buddha. Oh, it's called the Buddha. It was on KDP. You haven't seen it? It's called the Buddha? Uh-huh. Oh, that the dog commentary? So. Uh -huh. Oh. And it covers his whole life. And when it covers this aspect of his life, they actually interview someone who's still practicing oh, okay. self-mortification. And it's very thin. And um, you can, you can, can you give me the link, and I can upload yes. on the um, on the old calls. Yes. And do you have Netflix? Because that's where <laughs> you probably don't have Netflix, but um, Netflix is something that you can watch movies on. And oh, I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time. It's, it's for free oh, on that's there. That's luxury. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's all so that's a movie. Uh, yeah. Oh, so I'll try to find it on the internet and watch yeah. it on YouTube. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can give me a link so okay. I can put on on the um, uh, um, yeah, on course. Okay, let's just move on. Let me see here. Okay, so going for some question and number eight. Oh, oh you, you don't have it. Okay, number eight. Young mates, foot offering, Kevin? I actually think I looked up the wrong thing. Okay. I went on Google and put it in under Buddhism, and I came up, I found a story about a, uh, I don't have my paper with me because I couldn't put it up, but. Uh, about a lady who she wanted a husband of high stat of high status and a son, and she went and prayed to the tree god at a specific tree along this river, and ended up within a year getting married and having a son. So she decided to give the tree god an offering, and she, uh, she took her thousand cows and feed them very sweet fruit to make the milk very sweet, and then fed that milk to five hundred cows and fed the 500, the milk from the 500 cows to 250 cows and so on until she was just feeding eight cows. She used that to make uh, milk rice, which she then took to the tree as an offering and found a holy man there meditating. She gave the holy man the offering and he ate it and took the gold bowl to the river where he bathed and through the gold bowl in the river saying that if he was to be Buddha, the, river, the bowl would float upstream. If he was not, then the, it would float downstream and the bowl floated upstream. And that was the last time that he showered or ate in seven days because he went to the self-mortification. Okay, okay, um, may I read Meredith. Oh, yeah, you have anything to add? I have, uh, a totally completely different story. That's okay. Yeah. I didn't see it under the resources, so I just looked it up, and it was during um, Buddha's process of the self-mortification. He was trying to rid himself of desire. He thought that that was the root of immortality, and um, he became so famished that a herder's young maid offered him a bowl of porridge, and he accepted it. And through that, he realized that uh, 
moderation was yeah yeah so um, both you provide is the correct story it's different version <laughs> yeah okay, that's okay so anyway so he recognized like for six years of sample verification is so useless for you because this is so weak um, to make here to the practice by himself so big because of that offering uh, he recognized that he need to go to the middle path uh, a middle way that's, that's one of the most important aspects for this in later on now um, so he he recognized that um, he need to stay away from cell uh, indulgent that's just one polar not polar is cell modification right? so he go to the middle path the reason why later on, um, when he accepted the monk into this, the Sangha or, or the Buddhist or monastic communities, he uh, set the rules that um, they is not equal view a day. When they, they, so they go out to pay for food and people offer the food for them so that they can, can consume that food to sustain the body, not to torture the body. Uh, but of course, not, not to, to indulge. indulge in, indulge in, in um, the luxury life, uh, entertainment, and so forth. So, um, and uh, the act of this young man, uh, food offerings, is one of the most important acts. And the last, next, uh, <coughs> think, um, yeah, next week, next Wednesday, we talk about um, the man who offer him, um, according to the tradition, they said that the the poisons, um, mushroom. So this man, he's so, he's so scared, he's so frightened that because of his orphan, the Buddha passed away. That that make uh, Buddha sick and pass away. But Buddha say, well, don't worry. The first orphan of this young maid and your orphan um, are the same merit. They have the same merit. <coughs> Not nothing different. So this is very important that we know that even because sometimes, right, if um, um, we eat some sport food or wrong food that make us sick, uh, especially if someone gets us that kind of food, we be be angry, right? We're not talking about that uh, that kind of food may endanger our life, but for him, there's no difference between the first offerings and the last offerings. This is very important. Okay, let's move on. Number nine. Oh no, she's not here, right? Oh, oh, you please. Sorry, I made something wrong. Yeah, um, please. What you have? Well, um, mine is on determination for spiritual enlightenment, and I kind yes. of did it on a, as a whole because it is. There was. It just okay. pretty much said that Sadara decided. What did you say his name? Sadara. Uh -huh. He he realized that at this point, if he died without reaching enlightenment, he would just be reborn again. So he pretty much sat underneath a tree with the, it's a pipal tree, and he bowed to sit in meditation um, until he attained enlightenment. That's pretty much, so I looked up stuff on the internet, and it said to determine it, um, you have to look closely at yourself, that the Buddha teaches one to have regulation and self-awareness in all situations. Um, enlightenment starts with knowing, knowing Buddha and knowing that Buddha will change and flow from Buddha's mind. Ultimately, we attain enlightenment. We come to know that the world Buddha created is a multi-dimensional world that extends from our world is three-dimensional, um, where we refine our soul and go beyond the ninth dimension. So I don't really know what the, all that means, but okay. that leads to enlightenment, okay. <coughs> leads to spiritual awareness. Because the next one was uh, his awakening, so there really wasn't, it was kind of like hard to go between the self-mortification to the awakening. I mean, pretty much he just sat underneath a tree and meditated until he felt like he had reached, right, spiritual awakening? Now you mentioned about the story that um, he poked the ball uh, into the river and made the vows, right, uh, that without enlightenment, he would not leave this spot. And right. if he could attain enlightenment, the ball would flow upstream. So that's, that's the case. That's just he have strong determination. And he sat there for how many days, you remember? He sat under that tree for how many days? Three. How many? Three? No. no it's 40 49 days. Okay. Yeah. Not 49 hours. Not 49 <laughs> <laughs> No. 
for the United States. Imagine, of course, well, we know, right? Because he he has gone through the self modification experience, so he could handle, he could handle that kind of um, oxygen for four nine days work, right? But for us, four nine minutes is not easy, right? Not <laughs> have control for yeah four nine days. So, so he he sat there straight for four nine days so that we didn't sleep in. Uh, in the tech in the bath, so called. Many of you wonder why, right? The steel car, right? How about you? How about, do you have any experience in the, in in your life that let's say it if you when when you do something so that so in tune with your mind that you forget the house? You got that, mm -hmm. right? In love, right? In games, <laughs> right? In playing games or even sometimes. <laughs> You really like to write a paper, right? You are really in tune with that app. Or even, you know, if you're artist, right? When you draw pictures, images, so forth, you're so in tune with, in, with that image, with that pictures, and you forget the times. Mm, so this just happened. So time is just, is just the, uh, the conventional way for us to go. Okay, now it's five o'clock, so and so forth. But mm, when we really focus, we don't have we don't pay attention much about the times. And uh, later on, if you do more research about, especially um, in the Buddhist traditions, you see many monks, they could sit in meditation for days, for weeks, for months, for years, or even for decades. You cannot imagine, right? Wow, yeah, this is go beyond um, our, our common sense. But this happened. My my uh, my red master. Uh, let me show you here. This. this is my website, my personal website. This is my monastery. Here, this is my grand master. He's one of the famous Zen masters in China. He lived up to 120 years. Oh, he's just, he passed away when he was 120 years old. And I couldn't, to his biography, one day he, um, he sat in the hut uh, during the winter times in China. It's snow everywhere. So at that time, he he, he, he boiled the water to cook the potatoes. So somehow he ate the samadhi, and when he got out, the pota potatoes got spoiled. Uh, and so he, 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 he ate that samadhi uh, for more than a month without eating, just, yeah, without drinking, without taking bath, and so forth. This is for the Buddhist monks. Uh, that was just normal. If you really in tune with your mind, if you really <coughs> focus your mind, what you call, if you are in what samadhi or concentration, you, you, you may not concern much. You may not concern much about times. Time go fast. Yes. Which picture did you say you was at the top or the bottom? The, the top one. The top. The top one is my red master. The second one is my master. He passed away in 19, 1995. Yeah. And this is my monastery in Corden, if you want to stop by. This, this many Buddhist uh, study or outdoor, day, especially in winter, it's, it's nice. Anyway, so that's normal for, um, for Buddhist people. And even um, during the break, um, I, I took two weeks uh, of personal meditation retreat by myself. Um, and uh, I really want to do that hard practice so that they could um, train my mind. Anyway, so for common people, it's just not easy, right? We have we so busy with all kinds of things, right? We have so all kinds of stimul stimulation, right? Games, uh, works, uh, family concerns, and so forth. We cannot sit still. But if you really, if, if you really focus your mind, one always, especially in meditation. You may not notice the times. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, always move to the last one. Mm -hmm. And um, when we study 
last week when we study about one of the Buddha um, great disciple, his name is uh, Mahakashipa. Um, according to legend, I, I say legend. According to legend, he's still in Samadhi now for more than twenty, more than twenty-five hundred years, and he he is in Samadhi to wait for the next Buddha to come so that he could pass the rope and bow of the um, second Buddha to him. So for the Buddhist monks, sitting in meditation or sitting in samadhi is, this is common sense. You know, but for common people, it's not easy. Uh, it's take, of course, of course it takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of effort um, to train the body and mind. System. Yes? So when you meditate like that for two weeks, do you refrain from eating or? Oh no, I yeah, okay. I need to. I have, of course, I could not. Okay. I could not survive without eating. No. Do you do vipassana? Um, most of the time I do sit in meditation. I do the breath, um, yeah, breath meditation. This is simple, and, and this is it's easy for you to focus. Yeah, there's many ways we talk about that. Thank you. Okay, so um. Yeah, and so when when you're really in tune with that type of meditation, or any type of meditation, you will enjoy that. And all the things may not disturb you, all the sim stimulation um, would not disturb your mind. Yeah. Like um, while you, if you're an artist, right, while you draw the pictures, right, no matter what things people talk, you can really focus on that kind of drawing. Okay, okay so the last one. Uh, awakening. What's mean awakening? Not me. What do, what do you have? Okay. Um, I sort of just had like a collaboration. Okay, kind of that's thing. okay. Yeah. I mean, I kind of just talked about like where he came from. He was a prince. He was wealthy. Um, what led him to want to seek liberation, mm -hmm. um, which is the four sites. Um, how he he goes through all these trials and tribulations. He studies with other philosophers and does like the self um, mutilation, and it doesn't work for him. So. He sits under the tree and meditates, and he eventually like achieves nirvana. Or, um, oh. mm -hmm. He sees the true nature of reality. He like sees his past lives, and then is able to see other people's past lives. And I think it's interesting because doesn't he teach? Um, he says that he can't tell you how to find enlightenment. You have to like find it on your own. He can't really guide you. So I feel like. He went through all these methods that didn't really work for him, and he had to like go within himself to achieve the life. Then. <laughs> Your name is um, yeah. Krishna, right? Do you have it? Uh, my book hasn't arrived in the mail, but I went on Google Books and they had a preview, and they showed a few pages of the chapter, but not the whole chapter. Mm -hmm. And um, what I got from it was basically whenever he sat under the tree, um, a god came along and tried to distract him. Mm -hmm. We call Mara. Yeah, Mara. Yeah. And uh, did all these things to distract him. And eventually, um, the gods were elephant, like, bowed down to the Buddha after he was enlightened and submitted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. Um, and yeah, he could see his past lives. I think it was like, he could see his past lives and then he could see other people's past lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Sorry, I don't have much to add. <laughs> That's all. Um, this is my um, desktop page. <laughs> Can you see? Can you see the pictures, the image? Can you? So this is, this is the image that's, um, that when he sat at the, the Bodhi tree, Mara, Mara and uh, 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 the temptation um, to distract him. Can you see this? Can you see? Please. Okay, anyway. Uh, thank you. Um, let me go back here. Again, many people um, wonder what's meant by enlightenment, what's meant by awakening. Buddha, that's, a, that's mean awakening by uh, enlightenment. But what's mean? What's mean awakening? What's mean by uh, uh, enlightenment? What's mean? You know. You have to, yes, what do you know? To transcend suffering. To transcend suffering? How? Then, in practical sense, can you explain how? Um, in practical sense, 
I don't know how to do it yet, but um, <laughs> just not letting, all, not being attached to things and okay. uh, not looking to wealth or power, fame for happiness. Okay. Um, and maybe um, seeing the nature of uh, reality. Okay, how about others? Would you understand about the word enlightenment? You have in order to study, in order to understand Buddhism, you need to understand this definition in practical sense too. Otherwise, it's, it's so vague. Like, you, after you done business class, you don't know what's meant by Buddha <laughs> or like one or Nirvana. You know, you heard about what Nirvana, right? So, what do you mean? What do you think about the word enlightenment, uh, awakening, or Nirvana? What's mean? In practical sense, yes. So. Like the way things from your from your old self. Okay. Uh, okay. You know, like in order to like when you say that the uh, the monks that they meditate mm -hmm. and they forget about all the you know the what like the uh, self modification. Mm -hmm. You know, so the the enlightenment to me would be like giving up my old self okay. ideas and. Uh, as far as Buddha is concerned, I'm still, you know, working on that because I don't, you know, I'm still trying to find out what Buddha is, you know, about. Yeah, you. So when we, uh, let me explain briefly for you to understand. Otherwise, you can uh, mm, grab this idea. Um, this is important concept, but you have to understand. The concept. Okay, now, um, awakening, what's my awakening? Like um, at night, right? We go to sleep, and, on, uh, and tomorrow morning we wake up. Our my dreams? Does that mean, uh, mean awakening? And what's mean enlightenment? Now, and this delayed to meditation, too. This is our state of mind, and I put in a simple way. This is our state of mind. Um, like, dislike, this is like a pendulum. Like, dislike, anger, attachment. This is, we can generalize that type of uh, uh, mentality that we have every day. Right? When, when you go doubt how when you go somewhere else or when you miss anyone else. The first thing that pop up in your mind is what? Can you stay neutral? Or you have to either like or dislike that person? You understand what I'm talking about? First impression. We pre-program, we pre-program pre in our, our mind. We don't like that person or dislike that person. It's not easy for us to remain neutral unless we don't pay attention at all. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So we pre-program our mind, we don't like or dislike. And when we like, what happens? We are attached. Oh, that person is so beautiful, so handsome. Is that right? Oh, that's, that person sorry, so ugly and so forth. <laughs> so we don't like, or we detect. I will take that person. We run away from that person. It makes sense now? So this is that's the the uh, the common of our mentality. Either we attach to or reject to. It makes sense? It's not easy for us to remain neutral. And that reason why sometimes we have some kind of prejudice toward other people based upon their race, their gender, their age and so forth. Because according to, uh, to our, our mentality, we were edu educated, we were trained. Uh, okay, the boy or the man should both to wear these things. The girls or ladies should both to wear this and that and so forth. We were preparing, we were preparing our, our mind already with this kind of, of, um, um, of thought. So, what happened when you say, Love blind us, right? Make sense? 
Is that right? Or even anger, anger, hatred, black earth too. You see that? So with this kind of mind, attachment or love, makes us life, right? When we engage in love, wow, he or she is so beautiful, handsome. But what happens when we engage? When we get married, wow. Radical. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and anger, right? When we have too much anger, we have, we have uh, hatred toward other people. We could not see. We, whenever we have so much hatred or anger toward someone else, we say something we think we correct, but later on, most of the time it's wrong. You see that? So with this type of 